Hello everybody and welcome to my tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking about how to set up texture projection with Octane in Cinema 4D. Now to start, what we're going to do is let's just build something real quick that we can actually project our texture on. To start then we're just going to go up here, we're going to make a plane and we're going to make a cube. Let's select our cube and drag it up holding down left shift to constrain that to 10 degree increments so we can pull this up to 100 centimeters on the dot. Select our plane, press T and just scale this thing up a little bit. Now that we've got that set up, we're ready to get Octane out and start going. So let's just go ahead and click Octane, Octane Live Viewer and it'll take just a moment to boot up Octane for us. Now once we have it, what we're going to do is I love just to select these few dots right here at this corner and drag it just so this line goes from here to here. And once we have that set up, we can release and it'll snap that panel in so we have Octane docked in our viewport just like this for us. And this is my favorite way of using Octane. Feel free though to set that up however you would like to use it. Now that we've done this, let's go ahead and start up Octane by clicking this button and we're not going to have any anything actually be able to be seen in our scene yet because we don't have any light going out. But see these lines here? I don't really like those there. So what I, the way you can fix them, and if you want to, you don't have to, but you can go to render settings right here and change your film aspect ratio to a square one by one. And we, when we move the viewport, it'll go ahead and update that for us. Pretty handy. And now that we've done all this, let's just go ahead and go to objects, HDRI environment, and now we have an HDRI on our scene. Let's go ahead and select an HDRI. The way I'm going to do it is I have actually have the Grayscale Gorilla HDRI suite, so I also have HDRI link. So all I have to do to use that is right click HDRI link and go into my HDRI tag here on my Octane Sky and navigate into the image texture. Now this is where you could just manually drag in your own HDRI if you do not have the Grayscale Gorilla HDRI suite or a link. You could just Take any HDRI you want and just drag it in. For me, all I have to do though is just take File, drag it onto here, double click to open it up, and now I can just navigate and choose whatever HDRI I would, I would like. I'm just going to go ahead and choose Show All and scroll down until I find one that looks pretty, which for me, I really do love this outdoor church scene. It really looks, uh, it has some really good light. And there we go. It's not too strong, kind of nice and diffuse. And we're just going ahead and keep that. Now that we're set up, let's go ahead and get our texture projection going. All we have to do now is let's go ahead and build an Octane material. So we're just going to go to Materials, Diffuse Material, and drag this onto the floor and onto our cube. Let's double click this material and go to the Node Editor by selecting Node Editor right here. And we can close this little material editor in the back. I'm just going to go ahead and full screen this so we can start seeing what's going on. First thing we're going to need is we're going to actually need an image to actually project. So go ahead, navigate to your file on your hard drive, find any image you would like to project. For me, I'm going to do daily render 352, but you can use whatever one you would like to use. Once I got this in here, I'm simply going to plug it into the diffuse and let's take a look at what we got right off the bat. We have the texture being projected or not really projected, but it's being mapped via UV mapping. So that's what's actually going on. We have the UVs of our cube and our plane mapping this onto it. So that's not what we want. We want to actually project this from the position of the camera. So let's go ahead, select our image texture and click on projection. And this will create a image projection node. All we have to do is select that node and then take texture projection and change it from mesh UV to perspective. Now, as soon as we do this, everything is going to get really, really wonked out. But don't worry, we're going to fix this up. All we have to do is select texture projection and we have to put a camera inside of this little field right here for it to know what direction it should be projected from. First thing we need to do is go to objects and actually create an octane camera. And then we can drag that into this field right here under our texture projection node. And once we do that, if we hop in the camera, we can actually see we're projecting the image from the position of the camera. Now, one thing I want to point out is there is a bug while we're panning around that it's not actually going to live update the, pro the projection until we release. So if you want to have that actually live update, you have to actually left click and drag in your viewport to actually get that to work. The next bug I want to talk about is this is not actually lining up that well. If I back out and pull the cube down, uh, something about right here, it's kind of hard to tell but the cube is actually not lining up correctly with the projection on the plane. You can kind of see it 
a little bit here. It's kind of not showing too well. So what I'm going to have to do is we're going to move on to the second step, and that's actually scaling this thing. And notice, too, it's also upside down. Or actually, you can see here, see how the projection is not lining up? I'm getting ahead of myself. But see how the projection here from the cube and the floor is not lining up? This is because under position, we are in object space. We want to change this to world space, and instantly, that snaps and fixes it. So now they're all, both the plane and the cube are in the same space. We don't have that issue anymore. Next up is the scaling. It's way too big and it's upside down. So we gotta fix that. Best way to do that is simply select the image texture, click UV transform. This will create a UV transform node. Simply select this, go to the Z value and rotate it 180 degrees. So simply just type in 180 and we now have it rotated. Next up, just lock your aspect ratio, and then you can scale this here to make it bigger or smaller. And we can start tiling it, and we can go, we can do some really crazy stuff with it, quite honestly. It's very interesting what you can, what you can do. You can actually make it so small, it's like representing each pixel. But uh, I am getting distracted, so let's go ahead and pull this up to an easier value to see. And you can see that we can actually alter our scale in Per, um, per perspective and all that, we're not really perspective, but the scale of our image through the transform node, and we can rotate it through there without affecting our actual perspective uh, projection. So what's really cool is I can go ahead and start changing the shape of this. I could really squeeze it and morph it in my projection. This is how we're projecting it, but then we can change how it's actually being viewed, the overall size of everything, simply by adjusting our transform. So we don't have to worry about saying, if we didn't have this transform, normally you'd go through, okay, I like everything about this wide and this fat, this tall. But then you're like, everything's too big, so I'm going to have to shrink everything down. So let's go ahead, squeeze this shorter. Uh, I'm going to squeeze this down. Okay, this is what I want. You're just kind of constantly fiddling. So what I recommend, simply go to your transform node, set your size, or first off, set your um, set how pinched and squished you want it to be. Say you want it to be like, um, say you want it to be like that then go to your transform and then simply set how big you'd like it to be. And it's just much easier and I prefer this workflow. So I highly recommend trying it out, but uh, I'm getting off topic. But basically this is the setup. We are pretty much done at this point. We have our projection going down. We fixed our object space and we also made it so they're all in um, world space. So they're not having that overlap issue. And we created a transform to make sure that it's flipped 180 degrees and everything fits correctly. Hey guys, another quick thing I wanted to add to the end of this tutorial is just to quickly mention that this is completely procedural in the fact that you can make any object, like say we could create a sphere and we could put this right over here and we could put this texture on it and instantly it will just fit and work. Okay guys, that's all I wanted to quickly add back to the rest of the video. The last thing I want to quickly show you is you can also hop out of your camera and this projection is not locked in the actual viewports camera. So it's not what you're looking, it's what the camera's looking at. So it's this camera's perspective, not actually yours. So if you hop out of the camera, you can actually see from where it's being projected from, from here to there. And you can see in the Octane viewport that um, it looks pretty crazy looking. Everything is, uh, it makes you a little dizzy looking at that. It's very interesting. You can So you can definitely um, play around with this, do all kinds of crazy things. You can even morph from a camera position here to here to this camera's position with a camera morph tag and you can really um, do some cool stuff. So it only looks correct when you're viewing from this camera's position. So it's pretty neat. You can do a lot of great tricks with it and just realize that it's never going to look correct and perfectly projected and flat until you're looking from this camera's perspective. So um, with all that out of the way, um, I think this tutorial has basically come to an end. Let's we'll just put this back to a size of one and we'll go ahead and get rid of that aspect ratio and put that back to one. I mean, just take our transform value and bring it down. So at this point, the tutorial is over. Thank you all for watching. If you found it helpful, please leave a thumbs up. And if you didn't find it helpful, leave a thumbs down. And if you have any questions or have any issues, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And just before everybody takes off, before we leave, I have one little quick thing I'd add. If you really enjoyed this tutorial and felt like it was worth a donation, you can leave that on my website here. Go ahead, just click on my little picture underneath the video to take you to my homepage right there. And uh, feel free to leave a donation if you would like. It's never required, but always appreciated. I will see you guys all in the next tutorial.